Good afternoon. My name is Nicole Rivette, Public Relations Officer for Hillsborough County Fire Rescue. I would like to welcome everyone here today. Thank you for joining us for the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Memorial Exhibit. It is such a privilege that we are gathered here today to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice to protect and rescue others. As we go through our ceremony today, I hope that you do not mourn their loss or their family, family's loss, but that you celebrate their life and the choices and the selfless acts of heroism when, when our country was under attack. 9-11 has forever changed us, but it did not break us. President Bush said that night when he was addressing our company, excuse me, our country after everything happened, terrorist attacks can shake the foundation of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts may shatter steel, but they do not dent the steel of the American resolve. At this time, I would like to introduce our dignitary, Aaron Jacobson, producer of AM Tampa Bay, WFLA. John Hodge, COO, Stephen Siller, Tunnel to Towers Foundation. <laughs> Commissioner Beckner, District 6, Hillsborough County Board of County Commissioners. <laughs> Julia Pallas, Director, Division of State Fire Marshal. Doyle Carlton, the third, Chairman, Florida State Fire Authority Board. Our chaplain, chaplain Richard Rigdon, Hillsborough County Fire Rescue. And our fire chief, Ron Rogers, Hillsborough County Fire Rescue. Major. San Kerr Montu, Hillsborough County Fire, excuse me, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Jerry and Karen Bingham, parents of the notable United Flight 93 hero, Mark Bingham. <laughs> Our very own Captain Muldowney, his brother was Richie Muldowney for Truck 7, the Lower East Side of Manhattan. He could not be here today. <laughs> and last but not least, our firefighters from New York Fire Department who have traveled all this way to be with, here with us today. Please stand to be recognized. We'd like to begin our opening remarks with the Florida State Fair Authority Board, Doyle Carlton III. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon and welcome to the 2015 Florida State Fair. Today we're here to open the 9-11 Never Forget exhibit so that the 2015 Florida State Fair goers will have an opportunity to view the exhibit. The words grateful, honored, blessed, are often spoken without a lot of thought and consideration, but I can tell you that the Florida State Fair Authority and staff are genuinely and sincerely honored to be able to have the great exhibit as part of our presentation at the 2015 Florida State Fair. It has been said before, but I think it's worth repeating. When the attackers on 9-11 attack us, they wanted to knock America to their knees. And they did knock us to our knees. But rather than assume the position of submission that was their desire, we were on our knees seeking divine leadership to get us through that terrible day. Because of America's spirit, the divine leadership, our firefighters, our policemen, our first responders, 
our military, and all the public safety officials, America was able to rise through the fire, the smoke, and the debris to demonstrate what a great nation America is. So when I tell you we're... And I tell you that we're sincerely appreciative of the opportunity to house this exhibit during the 2015 State Fair. We are truly appreciative and thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. Please stand for the presentation of colors of the Tampa Bay Fire Rescue Honor Guard and the singing of the national anthem by our own Hillsborough County Fire Rescue Fire Medic 1. Chip Shield. Out of guard. All alert. Chaplain Richard Rigdon. <coughs> September 11th, 2001. May we never forget. May we never forget how our country and our lives changed that day. May we never forget the innocent lives lost on that September morning. May we never forget the feeling of vulnerability felt as the towers fell. May we never forget the stories of bravery that rose up as the dust settled. May we never forget the 343 firefighters that answered the call to serve that day. May we never forget our military men and women that stepped up to answer the call to arms. May we never forget those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. And most of all, may we never forget a nation that united itself in the days following the tragedy. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we remember September 11th, 
Let us turn our hearts and minds towards the good found only in You. Embrace our nation and let time never lessen the impact of that September day. May we never forget. We pray for our leaders. Father, may You guide their decisions. We ask that You protect those who serve and those who suffer and die to safeguard our nation. Father, we pray for forgiveness. Let our hearts be reminded of the grace given to us. Let Your love rain down upon us and let Your Word bring peace and contentment to our hearts. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would all safety personnel please rise? Public safety personnel, please rise. We'd like to recognize everyone that's here. The men and women of today's fire service are confronted with more dangerous work environment than ever before. We are forced to continually change our strategies and tactics to accomplish our task. Our methods may change, but our goals remain the same as they were in the past. To save lives and to protect property, sometimes at terrible cost. This is what we do. This is our chosen profession. This is the tradition of the firefighter. The fire service today is ever-changing, but it is steeped in traditions 200 years old. One such tradition is the sound of a bell. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of that day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and to place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their their fellow citizen. And when the fire was out, the the alarm had come to an end. And it was the bell that signaled to all all the completion of that alarm. When a firefighter had died in the line of duty, paying the supreme sacrifice, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced a comrade's passing. We utilize these traditions as symbols which reflect honor and respect on those who have given so much and who have served so well to symbolize the devotion these brave souls had for their duty. A special signal represents the end of our comrades' duties and that they will be returning to quarters. That fateful day of September 11, 2001, 343 fire department firefighters from New York selflessly gave their lives for the good of their fellow man. Their task completed, their duties well done, to our comrades, their last alarm. They have gone home. To respect this sacrifice, we will dedicate this bell ceremony to those firefighters with a signal of five rings four times as keeping with fire department tradition. Please stand for the retiring of the colors. Detail. Hey. Hey. All word. Hurt.
You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the afternoon, Aaron Jacobson from WFLA. Thank you guys for coming today, and this is such a special day because it's such a beautiful exhibit that you guys are about to see, and on behalf of myself, Jack Harris, Ted Webb, Corey Dillon, our entire AM Tampa Bay family, and 970 WFLA family, we're so honored to present this Never Forget 9-11 exhibit because, like you've heard here, it's not only about remembering what happened, it's about honoring the people we lost that day and noticing how America can rise up and exhibits like this for kids out there, I see a lot of young faces, if you weren't around, it's so important to see how America banded together after this and I was just taking a look at the exhibit, trying to bring it all in and if you look around, not only when you, when you go inside, you're going to see what happened, what unfolded on that day, but also the build-up, the construction of the original World Trade Center, and then you're going to see the uh, construction of the new World Trade Center. So it's just such a special exhibit that uh, we are all, and 970 WFLA is so honored to present, and we hope you guys enjoy it. It's, it's a beautiful exhibit, and just uh, thank you guys for being here and enjoy it. Next, we have Julia Hallett, Director, Division State, Florida Fire Marshal. Thank you very much, and it's an honor to be here. And uh, commissioners, uh, directors, <coughs> Chief Rogers, uh, fellow fire chiefs and firefighters, and our colleagues from uh, New York Fire Department. At my first 35 years of my career, was spent in Sarasota and Longboat Key Fire Rescue. I've been with the Division of State Fire Marshal for the last five and a half years and just passing 40 years. But my life changed, actually, uh, ironically, on September 9th, after months of planning, we were hosting President Bush for what was just going to be a, a, a couple evening stay. And on September 11th, he went on to speak at, at a school in Sarasota and many of us remember seeing that on TV as the towers were had already been impacted when President Bush was advised of this horrific act and so here we thought after months of working with the FBI and the Secret Service that we were just going to have a, a quiet visit of the president in our district I was fire chief then and I was with the police chief when we started to see the events unfolding on TV Wow. Didn't, didn't life change that morning? And so uh, I'm privileged to, to bring remarks on behalf of the governor, the cabinet, and my boss, the chief financial officer and state fire marshal, Jeff Atwater, who just a few days ago were here for a cabinet meeting uh, at the beautiful state fair. So I want to let all of you know that we're proud to have this event at the state of Florida. Uh, what an incredible thing for everybody to work together and bring this event here. And I would like to close my remarks and let our colleagues know from, from New York that 343 means a lot to us. I got to go to the memorial service that year. I was president of the Florida Fire Chiefs after September 11th, and I've been on the Florida State Domestic Security Council ever since. Um, we will never forget. Thank you for your service. God bless. Next, we have John Hodge, COO of the Stephen Sillers Tower to t excuse me, Tunnel to Towers Foundation. Come on, guys, come on, walk over here. Good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> Before we start, I'm just my 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 first comment is going to be is that you know we talk about this a lot I'm a family member of someone also who was killed on September 11th Stephen Seller for which our foundation is named uh, was my cousin some days are better than others you guys have put together one spectacular ceremony here today I was not anticipating this I wasn't ready for it and <coughs> if I know so please bear with me uh, it's very emotional 13 14 years later it's not a lot of time for something like this to have happened time to have passed 
So with that, I want to start with yesterday. We had an unbelievable, incredible motorcade escort into here. So I want to say a few thank yous about that because it wasn't the beautiful, bright, sunny Florida day that you have right now. Uh, although it was in the Northeast, which was getting another foot of snow. Uh, I want to thank the Patriot Guard riders. Do we have any Patriot Guard riders here today? All right, well, they were with us in force yesterday. We had a couple hundred of them. And I want to say thank you so much. Riding in that rain can just be no fun. They are with us and for us all over this country, wherever we go. They're there for us. So thank you to the Patriot Guard riders. I would like to thank the Florida State Fair for bringing us in, for having the wisdom and the vision. Thank you so much, sir, for bringing us in. It is our honor. I know you said you're on it. It's our honor to be here today to share all of these stories with your folks and the folks of the Tampa Bay area. I want to thank the Hillsborough County Fire Rescue Squad. They were there yesterday for the, for the uh, escort. They're here today. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Tampa Bay Fire Rescue and all the others who are here. And I'm seeing different patches, so clearly I don't have all the names. But thank you all for being here and participating today. What I would like to do is we've kind of alluded to them a couple different times. Uh, I'd like to actually have them stand. We're going to call out the names. We are fortunate that as your tour guide, as your docent on this exhibit for the next few days, you're going to have members, four members of the FDNY who were there and fought the battle at Ground Zero. And um, it means a lot to them. It means a lot to them to be here. Some of them are retired, some of them are old, like Battalion Commander Jack Ohm, who I'll introduce in a minute. Some are, some are not quite as old, they're still active duty, and believe it or not, they actually schedule their vacation time around this, and they volunteer. So with that, I'd like to introduce <coughs> our good friend and buddy, Battalion Commander Jack Ohm. Would you please stand? <laughs> Stay standing, please, Jack. Captain Peter Wright. Captain Bob Bauman and Firefighter from Rescue 5, Dan Byers, please stand. Gentlemen, thank you so much for everything you do. You can sit down now, guys. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation is named after Firefighter Stephen Siller. I'm going to share his story with you because I don't know how many of you really know his story. He is symbolic of what all the first responders did that day. But he's also, as I say, a family <coughs> member. This is a family-run foundation. So we share Stephen's story wherever we go. Stephen was off duty, heading home to play golf with his brothers in Staten Island, New York. He heard the call on the scanner in his pickup truck. He always kept it on, apparently. So he heard what was happening at the World Trade Center. He turns his truck around, goes racing back to his firehouse, Squad 1 in Brooklyn, picks up his gear. Fire trucks had already rolled to Manhattan at that point. So he gets, throws the gear in the back of his pickup truck and gets out on a highway known as the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. And he starts heading towards Manhattan while still in Brooklyn. He starts heading towards Manhattan. He wants to get into Manhattan through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. As he gets closer to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, all traffic on the, on the expressway and in the tunnel has been stopped. No more inbound traffic into Manhattan at that point. Not to be deterred, he literally abandons his truck in the middle of that highway, leaving the keys on the front seat. Gets out, puts on 60 to 65 pounds of gear, and starts to run. And he ran those approximately three miles from where he was on the highway, through the tunnel, through the streets of lower Manhattan, where he met up, at least we believe he met up, with his fellow members from Squad 1. And neither he or any of his members from Squad 1 ever returned. All 12 of them were killed that day, and no part of them has ever been found. So that's why we believe they found each other and they were all together. That's Stephen's story. We as a family said that we did not want to let his memory and what he did and what the other first responders did that day perish, be left behind in that hellhole. So we formed the Stephen Siller Tunnel to Towers Foundation. And our motto was let us do good. We do many things, we have done many things in the 13 plus years since we formed. I'm going to go through a couple of them. One is, right now, is that we have established, and you find out about it if you go to the exhibit, we have established the Building for America's Bravest program, which builds homes, smart homes, for the most catastrophically injured service members throughout the United States. As a matter <coughs> of fact, uh, Marine Sergeant Mike Nicholson here from Tampa received one from us just a little over a year ago in January of 2014. 
These homes allow these service members to live an independent lifestyle. And when I say catastrophically injured, by and large, the ones we're building for are either triple or quadruple amputees. So they have many challenges, and these homes allow them, in some cases, a couple of cases where quadruple amputees are able to live in their own home by themselves with a caregiver visiting periodically because that's the kind of independence these, these homes give. That's something we're doing. We know that without September 11th, had there never been a September 11th, none of these service members would have been in harm's way. I'm going to stop my little story here for a second because I see one service member over here. If you're a veteran or served in any war, will you please just stand for a second? I'd like to have you recognized also, please. Please stand up. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for your service. So we know without September 11th, none of these folks, none of these men would have been in harm's way. So we want to take care of them, and that's what we're doing. We build homes across the country. One of our other programs, you see what it is here today. It's our Never Forget program. Obviously, as a family member, we're very tuned into September 11th, what happened that day. We, we know that people, we, we've heard it numerous times say we can never forget. And I have no doubt that the first responders behind us will never forget. Who could forget something like that that day? But at the end of the day, we wanted to get this out across the country for a couple of reasons. One, we know a lot of people aren't ever going to be able to make it in New York to see the 9-11 memorial that's there. This brings the same story and a lot of the artifacts, many artifacts, right here into your hometown. That was important to us. Two, we want to honor we want to make sure we honor what the first responders did that day. We know the number 343 firefighters. Well, that number's actually gotten a lot higher because a lot of them have perished since then because of the effects of what they were breathing in. So someday we're going to have to update that number. But it was 343 firefighters or 414 first responders total. We want to make sure that people know, and particularly the younger generation, that they were real heroes who walked the face of the earth that day. And because they were there in that time, in that place, same as Stephen, they got over 25,000 people, this is according to former Mayor Rudy Giuliani, over 25,000 people out of those two buildings before they came down. It was the largest mass rescue evacuation in the history of the world. They paid a very dear price. We want to make sure we tell some of their stories in there, and you'll hear some of them. Hopefully they'll be inspirational. And then lastly, we can never forget. We had a warning shot fired over our bow in 1993. They bombed the World Trade Center. We did very little about it. And because we did very little about it, it didn't change the way we thought and the way we acted. September 11, 2001 happened. We can never forget. And if we think <coughs> that it's not important, or that was 13, 14 years ago, think about the events of just the past few weeks and what's going on in this world today. The children who are going to come into this exhibit need to know about it. We have almost two generations since 9-11 now, and by and large, it's not being taught in any great detail in the schools throughout the United States. It's, it's, it's not indictment, it's not a criticism, it's just what's happening right now. They need to know because for the rest of their natural life, their lives will be affected by the events of September 11th, whether they know it or not, and they should know why it all started and how it all started. So I just want to say from the bottom of my heart. You guys have overwhelmed us here today. Thank you so very much. We're pleased to be here. Um, I will, one other thing, cautionary tale here. We would like to, we have a tradition, our FDNY members would like to take the first responders through the exhibit right after we finish with the ceremony. If you'd allow that for us, please. <coughs> Line up, we'll get you set up, and we'll get you through just as quickly as we can. God bless each and every one of you for being here today, and may God continue to bless these United States of America. Have a wonderful day. Our next speaker, Commissioner Kevin Beckner, District 6. Well, thank you, Nicole. And on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners and also Commissioner White's office, uh, who uh, Victor Beavis is representing here today, it's a pleasure and honor to be here. And I first want to start by thanking Hillsborough County Fire Rescue uh, for the invitation to come speak here today. And I have to say, when I first started and walked in here, uh, I don't know about you, but the emotions of 9-11 just started coming through 
to me all, all again. And as I was preparing for this, it was especially probably one of my most emotional uh, speeches that I had prepared for um, in, uh, in my political career that began in 2008. And I have to tell you, it's also an, an special privilege to speak in front of New York's bravest who were on the front lines, <coughs> and also the Binghams, whose son paid the ultimate sacrifice so more people could live and to all the first responders out there who every single day put their lives on the line to make sure that they keep our community safe. And yes, we will never forget September 11. Um, some of the thoughts that I want to share with you this afternoon were actually inspired by an essay I read in Parade Magazine written by Tom Brokaw entitled, Lessons We Must Never Forget. Let's begin by taking a trip back in time to that fateful day. Do you remember where you were, what you were doing, who you were with, when you heard the headlines that America was under attack? Do you remember how you felt right after the attacks? All those calls to loved ones, the tears of shock as we watched the mighty Twin Towers come crumbling to the ground and doomed Americans jump to their deaths. The vows we made to count the blessings in our lives and to be kinder to our neighbors. All of those neighborhood block parties, the barbecues, the interfaith candle light vigils, the freedom walks, and all of those prayers recited in unison by the faithful and devoted alongside people who had stepped in a place of worship for years. Do you remember the unwavering sense of patriotism and unity we shared as Americans? How stores couldn't keep the American flags in stock? How you could turn on just about any radio station at any time and hear Lee Greenwood sing, God bless the USA. Do you remember? Do you remember how differences evaporated? We were all Americans by God. We were going to rise from the ashes of evil through the sheer force of our unity. We stopped asking questions like, are you Republican or Democrat? Or what's your religious faith? Instead, we started asking questions like, how are you doing? How's the family? What can I do to help you? And conversations typically ended with a comforting hug. Do you remember? The time shortly after 9-11 was a time when most Americans, regardless of their personal politics, felt their own hearts swell when our president said, we have seen the decency of a loving and giving people who have made the grief of strangers their own. When even those Americans who didn't know how they were going to pay the next month's rent donated money to help the families whose loved ones kissed them goodbye in the morning, unbeknownst that would be their final kiss goodbye. We mourned as a family and found common ground on which to move forward. We saw political adversaries stand by side by side on the Capitol steps as they sang, God bless America. We watched proudly as young men and women enlisted in the military, knowing they would soon be in harm's way. Do you remember? When war came and there were differences about why we were fighting, we had spirited but proper debates. When protesters took to the street, there were no scenes of racial division, car burnings, tear gas and billy clubs, but a civil demonstration. We waited patiently in airport security lines as new federal agencies tried to sort out what was affected and what was merely symbolic. You remember? Now come back to today. A lot has changed since September 11, 2001. <coughs> We've elected and re-elected a president who is both revered and reviled. We're still fighting terrorism and religious extremists. 
So much of that common fabric of unity has unraveled. Our nation has once again become bitterly partisan, and too often individuals are judged by their political party affiliation instead of their character and shared human values. We've gone about our lives with too little association to the sacrifices of those fighting us far away and the sacrifices of their families living just down the street or seated in the next row at our houses of worship. We need to be citizens again, once again offering our assistance to each other. By doing so, we show that we are more than the sum of our parts. We need to listen to each other and shout less. The 9-11 attacks were the beginning of an unexpected passage in American life in a new century, and no one group has all the answers. Because of technology, our planet, even with its growing number of inhabitants, is more connected than ever before. By the same token, it is more competitive. We cannot keep our place as the greatest nation on Earth if we are self-absorbed, a deeply divided people, too quick to forget the unity that prevailed immediately after 9-11. We owe those who lost their lives that day and the resulting wars and a common commitment to the values they personified, the values that have made this an exceptional country. So while this sacred exhibit will help us never to forget those who lost their lives and the darkness that fell on our country and community on 9-11, let it also help us always remember the light that illuminated the path of unity, reconnected the roots of our humanity, and lifted us up with pride and honor to call ourselves the great United States of America. Thank you, and may God continue to bless and unify each and every one of us and this exceptional country called America. My father was a Marine in the Vietnam War. A soldier in his platoon tripped a mine in front of him. The shards of metal tore open his abdominal cavity, and the Agent Orange that he was exposed to has accelerated his Parkinson's disease. My father went to the Vietnam War Memorial last Memorial Day. He was so amazed at the amount of people that came every day to pay their respects and honor the fallen soldiers with flowers after all those years. He said the sight of all that brought tears to his eyes, and he's not a man that cries, and it made him so proud to be a Marine. I asked him, Dad, would you do it all over again for your country? <laughs> In a simple words that I knew were coming, he simply stated, Semper Fi. And for the first time since that conversation, when this wall arrived yesterday, I could actually understand where my father was coming from. As we stand next to this wall that honors the 343 brothers and sisters that fell that day, I know that on that day there came a point when those firefighters and first responders knew that they were not going home. But even with that thought, they still carried on the mission. They still carried on the orders to save and rescue as many people as they could that day. They are the type of firefighters and first responders that we need to aspire to be every day. It is our duty to teach our children that freedom is not free and that the daily sacrifices that our soldiers and first responders make or have made and that they are the very reason that we can sleep peacefully at night. I want to thank you all for attending our ceremony today. It is the most prestigious honor that we are here with our brothers from SNDY. Please stay and meet with them and listen and share their stories and experiences. Thank you everyone from all the first responders of every department to the cadre that are up here on stage. Thank you everyone for being a part of our ceremony today. Thank you.